The Mars Alpha pattern Lehman Russ employed by the Death Corps of Krieg is arguably a better looking tank than the regular old Phaeton pattern that we've had in plastic for many years now. However, it's only really been available in resin. That is until now. With the release of the new plastic Solar Auxilia, Games Workshop sent me the Solar Auxilia Battle Group, and I'll be using its contents to kitbash a Death Corps of Krieg Lehman Russ. Adventurers, your quest has taken you across the peaks of the Skyward Mountains, beneath the branches of the Gloomwood and deep within the caverns of Ulthurath. Your journey has been hard and full of perils, but your hunt for the source of this darkness draws to a close. Finally, you have reached the lair of Kalayavan. If you're a good storyteller, you don't want your maps to let you down. Fortunately, Chepeku has your back. Chepeku are the creators behind over 4,000 breathtaking fantasy maps designed to elevate your tabletop adventures. From your classic adventuring locations to more eccentric locales like the Hal's Tax Office or the Lair of the Elder Brain, Chepeku maps offer an extensive array of settings ready for you and your players to explore. You can also immerse your players like never before with dynamic, animated maps that will bring your encounters to life. There are thousands of beautifully crafted maps already, with new additions being added every week. But the icing on this already fantastic cake is that Chepeku maps are virtual tabletop ready, compatible with popular platforms like Roll20 and Fancy Grounds. So, however you play, you too can enjoy these wonderfully crafted maps. Join this thriving community of adventurers for as little as $1 per creation over on Patreon by checking out the links in the description and the pinned comment below. And start elevating your adventures today. The bulk of this build saw me assembling the tank as per the instructions. As both the Solar Auxilia and the Death Corps used the Mars Alpha pattern, the basic structure of the Lehman was pretty much perfect already. Once I had finished assembling the hull and the turret, work could begin on turning this into a Krieg tank. One of the biggest differences between the Solar Auxilia and the Krieg variants is the lack of air scrubbers and life support add-ons that allow the Death Corps of Krieg to operate in highly dangerous environments. These would be added by adding a few extra tanks across the hull, starting with some leftover flamer tanks from my earlier Valhallen Sentinel build, which you should definitely check out if you haven't done so already. Link in the description. The tanks were compared against the side of the turrets before realizing that the pipes needed to be clipped down. These were reduced steadily until the tanks were fitting properly. I also need to clip away the tab at the back of the tanks, but once this was removed, they were glued to the turret. Some more tanks, this time taken from the Krieg plastic kit, would be used to bulk out the rear of the tank. The pipe was clipped away, trimmed down, and glued next to the engine bay. Combined, the two sets of tanks help to both add a little extra detail to the tank, whilst also helping it lean towards that Krieg theming. But one incredibly easy and straightforward way to push that Death Core flavor was to add one of the minis to the turret. Unfortunately, Games Workshop had been incredibly selfish, and decided to sell their plastic Krieg with legs, which would mean this particular trooper wouldn't fit into the turret yet. After a quick comparison to get a rough idea of how the model should sit in the turret, I broke out the saw and made a straight cut across the upper thigh. The model was dry fitted during this process just to make sure that the resulting edge was nice and flat. After cleaning up the cut, the binocular and last pistol holding hands were attached to the torso along with the head. After testing the fit to make sure that the arms lined up in the surrounding turret, the top hatches were also glued into place. The new Lehman Russ comes with a number of pintle mounted weapon options and from these I selected the heavy stubber. Normally its mounting point would be in front of the turret hatch but placing it here would get in the way of the tank's commander. So instead it would be mounted facing towards the rear of the turret. As there wasn't a dedicated mounting point here, the base of the strut had to be cut down, filed and trimmed until it could slot nicely into one of the recesses at the back of the turret. After being glued into place, the new position reflected a potential battlefield modification made by the crew to better defend against infantry attacks at the rear of the tank. Continuing with the battlefield upgrades, a few sandbags were also glued around the turret. These were sourced from the Cadian Shock Troops and Cadian Upgrade sets and arranged to offer the commander a little extra protection when he's outside of the turret. 
From here, some additional stowage was added to the tank. I've always preferred this heavily laden appearance for my tanks and my Raptors, so we'll take any opportunity to add some extra equipment. A backpack from the Cadian upgrade kit was glued to the rear of the turret, along with some ammo cans from the heavy weapons teams. This was placed next to the stubber to give the commander easy access to some extra ammo. Finally, a folded stock last gun from the sentinel kit was glued towards the front of the turret, just in case that stubber wasn't enough. To help offer a little extra realism to the turret, a few spent casings will be placed across the flat surfaces around the stubber. These were created by cutting down some 1mm plastic rod into roughly 3 or 4mm lengths. With a few of these prepped, they were scattered across the base of the stubber. This is just a small detail, but it helps to create those little stories about how the tank has been operated. The storage wasn't done yet. A crate from the field ordnance kit was placed on the flat area next to the engine, shortly followed by some fuel cans and packs sourced from the sentinel kit and the upgrade kit. These were stacked in a fairly haphazard way to further cement that unorthodox look that I was going for. Finally, a few storage items taken from the base kit were added to the back of the tank. At this point, I decided to build upon those additional sandbags that I placed on the turret, but I would need a lot more sandbags. This would be resolved by using some blue stuff. This is a thermoplastic that when heated in boiling water becomes soft and pliable. You can press your parts into it whilst it's still warm and then allow it to cool. Once it's cooled down, simply pop out the original part and you're left with an impression of the piece. As I needed quite a few of these sandbags, I repeated this process a few more times. With the molds prepped, some green stuff was cut, mixed up and then pressed into each of the molds. Now, as I always recommend when working with green stuff, make sure to break out the Vaseline for this step. By applying a very small amount into the mold, you will help to prevent the green stuff from getting stuck and not releasing properly later on. Once all the molds were filled, they were left to part the cure for a few hours. The sandbags will be mounted to the front of the tank, but they would need something to retain them and prevent them from sliding off as soon as the tank comes to a sudden stop. So a kickboard was created out of some 1.5mm thick plastic card. After lining the card up at the front of the tank, I marked out a 50mm by 4mm strip and steadily scoured the edges with my knife. Once it was cut out, the plastic card was filed down before finally being glued to the front of the tank. After giving the putty enough time to harden up a little while still having some flexibility, they were carefully removed from the moulds. The putty was firm enough to hold and retain all the details while still being a little flexible. This meant that, as I built them up across the front of the tank, I could gently press them against the surface so they sat more naturally. The sandbags were steadily stacked up across the front, positioning them so that they didn't obscure the hull mounted weapon or the viewport. Once these were in place, I was left with some low cost and probably low effectiveness applique armor. In addition to the sandbags, the green stuff would also prove useful in fixing the empty hole in the back of the commander. Normally, a backpack would be attached here, but the bulky pack made little sense within the cramped confines of the turret. So, a small amount of putty was pressed into the hole and blended into the surrounding area. From here, I used a rubber tip sculpting tool to sketch out the straps so that they lined with the existing straps on the torso. Once the basic shape was achieved, things were tidied up and the torso was put to one side until it had cured. I was on a bit of a sculpting streak by this point and decided to bulk out some of the stowage a little more. To create a rough sack, a small lump of green stuff was formed into a teardrop shape before being pressed onto that crate at the rear of the tank. Some creases and folds were added towards the top of the teardrop to give the impression of the material being gathered up. Finally, a small ball of green stuff was added on top and more creases and folds were carefully scoured into it. The result was a sack that had been closed up by a tight cord. The final detail to add was a piece of paper, specifically a map that the commander is consulting. This was formed by rolling out yet more green stuff using the rounded handle of a paintbrush and some Vaseline. This was unsteadily until I'd achieved the desired thickness. From here, it was cut into a roughly 10mm square and left to cure. By allowing the putty to harden up a little, it not only made it easier to handle, but it also meant I could add creases and create the appearance of an unfolded map. 
This was achieved by laying half of the square across the edge of a steel ruler before gently folding over the other half with another flat metal surface, specifically the handle of my scalpel. The piece was then rotated 90 degrees and repeated to create a crossed seam. The unfolded map was then gently laid across the sandbag at the front of the turret, completing the tank. But before I show you the painted miniature, if you've been enjoying this video so far, please do leave me a like and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. It's a really small thing, but it really helps me out. So thank you, and let's take a look at the finished miniature. And here we have the completed Death Core of Krieg, Lehman Russ. Now, as someone who is really into tanks, there is a surprising lack of them on my channel, so it's been nice to finally come back and build one. As with my Valhalla Sentinel build, there wasn't much in the way of customization of the base model here. My focus was mainly on building up a particular aesthetic over a fairly immutable model. But I think the end result is quite clearly a Krieg tank and would be perfect accompaniment to anyone who is trying to build up an all plastic Death Core of Krieg army. If you're interested in how I painted this model, then I would recommend checking out my huge custom tank build from a couple of years ago. I followed the same steps to achieve the greyish blue colouring, but instead of oil paints, I made use of some of Monument Hobby's Noosh acrylic medium. I'm sure I'll cover this in more detail in the future, but I highly recommend checking out Artist Opus's video on the product, as this will be a much more in-depth guide than I could do. I'll include a link to that in the description. I'll also include all the kits that I used to build this kit down in the description, with some affiliate links to Element Games. But before I go, I just want to thank my Patreon supporters and channel members, the people who are responsible for keeping these videos coming. Especially a pouch of Dead and Orbits tier and above supporters, who are Andrew Consul, Axel Jonsson, Bartosz Zukovic, Lizerka, Daniel Dowling, Ian, Immaterial Creations, I have no idea how to pronounce this one, but I think it's Yazoya, Maciej Savitsky, Matt Brower, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, Pale Juice, Plops of Corn, Ryan Little, Swedsman, and Tim. And my Sergeant Level channel members who are Lloyd Davis, Dea, Trooper Geo, Mr. Jared Hess95, David, John Gibbs, The Sire Acquired, Philip Poya, Nerdings and Paints, Mark Taylor, and Whale Tussler. If you're interested in supporting me, you can hit the join button below or find a link to my Patreon in the description. Supporters get a whole host of benefits, including ad-free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.